Hi, my friends. Dennis Prager here. I'm going to go immediately to my guest so we understand more about the, everything Ukrainian. Lee Smith, investigative journalist, which he is. He's been on this program a number of times. He has a new book, by the way, coming out at the end of this month, The Plot Against the President, the true story of how Congressman Devin Nunes uncovered the biggest political scandal in U.S. history. I happen to agree with you. I think it is the biggest political scandal in U.S. history. I don't think that's overstated. Anyway, Lee Smith, welcome to the Dennis Prager Show. Thank you, Dennis, for inviting me on. It's always a huge pleasure, uh, pleasure and privilege to be with you and your listeners. Wow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's not? <laughs> Maybe I'm it's wrong. Not. I don't know. <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. You see how hard my life is, then, I guess, right? <laughs> That's right. Where are you? Are you in Washington, D.C.? I am. I am. I uh, volitionally or because your your vocation demands it? I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a beautiful city. How's that? And there are some... Then there are some wonderful uh, Americans here. And this is actually, since you mentioned my book, I don't want to talk about it too much right now, but I'd love to come on later later when the book is out and talk yes, about it. Yes, I, of I, course I, you I will. will. Say, yep. I will say that one of the things that I found, and I think it's going to make a lot of readers um, happy and, and even more so proud to see people like Congressman Nunes and others, how hard they fought. Um, how hard they fought for their for their fellow citizens to get to the truth, um, to get to the truth, and to identify the different things that happened. And they they fought a lot of things. They were outgunned. Whether it was the press, whether it was the uh, the intelligence bureaucracy here in Washington, whether it was the um, you know wh- whether it was left wing uh, left wing money, but they fought and. Um, Again, it's really their their work, their role is phenomenally impressive. God bless them. So I'm eager. I'm eager. For well, them. let me bounce this. To let, see that story. Well, in light of what you just said, I want to bounce this yeah. off you and then get to Ukraine. Sure. I believe you're mentioning Devin Nunes fighting is what prompts this yeah. comment. Mm-hmm. I believe that this is the first time in my life that I have seen the left being fought. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, Do you know I said this on uh, Waters World on Fox News this weekend, and I was on for like, you know, four minutes. And very interestingly, I always find it interesting what people react to. And as a throwaway line, Mm -hmm. I just mentioned they're not used to being opposed. They're not used to being investigated. Right. And this president is the yeah. first to oppose the left. This and this went viral. Things, this right. this comment went viral. Yeah. And whenever something goes viral, it doesn't mean it's, it, you're, it's right. It could be wrong. Right. But it means it hit a nerve. Right. And, and I really do believe that this is, they're not used to this. The left is, is right. used to bullying, and the bully is being fought for the first time. Right. I agree entirely, and you may have seen, you probably did see yesterday, uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal all had what was essentially the same piece about Attorney General, uh, Attorney General William Barr's uh, investigation into the origins of the Trump-Russia probe. And if you look at the basic layout of these pieces and you see other things that's happening, it's not just that they're not used to being fought. They're not used to being investigated. And so they're not even, they're not even used to being looked at. But now people are looking at a whole bunch of different things that went behind this investigation of Trump. Of course, it wasn't an investigation. It was an intelligence operation run by Clinton operatives, Obama officials, large parts of the IC, and, of course, the press. And the fact that people have fought back, whether it's Devin Nunes, whether it's President Trump, whether it's the Attorney General, um, I think that it's something that, it's something, again, like I, 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 one of the things that I wrote the book for is to not just to highlight how terrific, you know, um, Congressman Nunes and his team was, but also, that, you know, I hope to inspire people, say, it can be done. You can, 
you can't say these things, you can't fight back. I don't think anyone wants a, wants a real pitched battle in the streets of American cities. What I'm talking about is people standing up for what they know is right and standing against what they know is wrong. And certainly President Trump, is he's out there in the middle of it. Do you think they will, before the 2020 election, actually come up with how the Russia collusion hoax was created? Um, I'll, I, I, I have no insight into this at all. What I will say is, from the different articles that have been written about Barr and U.S. Attorney John Durham's, uh, the questions of whom they're asking questions, whether it's of the Ukrainians, whether it's of the Italians, whether it's of the Brits or the Australians, my sense is they have a very, very good idea right now of what happened. The other thing is, I think in an investigation like this, the first thing you do is not go to questions. The first thing you do is you go to the documents whatever documents there are, to get all the background information so you know how to ask the questions you need to ask. Again, I have no real insight into this. I'm just telling you, looking at this, no inside insight, looking at it from the outside, what it looks like. They know where to go to ask the questions, and they've probably already figured out what are the questions they need to ask. Okay, let's go to Ukraine. All right. So, uh... Uh, Sean, would you please play uh, for uh, Lee Smith? Would you play the the Joe Biden uh, excerpt there? How was your role as vice president in in charge of policy in Ukraine and your son's job in Ukraine? How is that not a conflict of interest? It's not a conflict of interest. There's been no indication of any conflict of interest from Ukraine or anywhere else, period. I'm not going to I'm not going to respond to that. Let's focus on the problem. Focus on this man, what he's doing that no president has ever done. No president. OK. Uh, so uh, what, there you have it. Yeah, there that, you have it. That's the colonel. That is the colonel of Russiagate. D- pay no attention to what I did. Pay attention to this man, Donald Trump. Don't you pay any attention to what I did. That's what the dossier was about. That's what Hillary Clinton, the entire operation on behalf of Hillary Clinton was about. Don't you pay any attention to what might be on my emails. Don't you pay any attention to the fact that uh, that I mishandled classified information. Pay attention to Donald Trump. That's the real issue. This is what they've been doing since at least 2016. So just generally, now we can come back into Ukraine. I just wanted to point out, this is why I say it's the same operation. It's purpose for the same thing, and they're doing exactly the same thing. Pay no attention to the dirt we're involved in. Look at someone else. I mean, it's astonishing Mm -hmm. that Joe Biden can be on videotape bragging that he forced the Ukrainian president to fire their chief prosecutor, threatening withholding billions of dollars of U.S. loan guarantees, Mm -hmm. and that he gave the president six hours. This is Joe Biden on video telling an audience with pride how he twisted the arm of the Ukrainian president to get rid of the prosecutor who was looking into his son. (laughs) That this is not an issue to the American media is, 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 is dumbfounding. Right. So, I mean, it's, 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 but all of this stuff, when you, when, when we, when we started off, you're saying that, you know, now people are finally fighting, fighting the bullies. Like, this is always what they've done, though. People just turn the page and go, yeah, forget it. It's not worth it. Or Joe's on our side. What do we care? None of our business. Yes, Move along. That's right. The real problem is Trump. Right. The real problem is some, you know, whoever the Republicans are running is a fascist, a Nazi, by virtue of the fact he's running on the Republican side of the ticket. Right. That's always been, that's the default. That's the default move. I say about Ukraine, what I try to, I, this is not really what this piece is about. But I think it's something important to keep in mind. There are, I have a few lines in this piece about it. The significant thing about Ukraine is not, it's certainly not 2020 and this so-called whistleblower's complaint about Trump trying to get information on Biden 
as a leg up in the 2020 race. It's not really even about 2016. All right, hold on. Uh, that's a perfect uh, trailer for what we're about to hear. Lee Smith, his article, Real Clear Politics, is up at DennisPrager.com. The Dennis Prager Show. All right, y'all, Dennis Prager here. A uh, major investigative journalist, Lee Smith, his piece at at uh, Real Clear Politics is up at DennisPrager.com. And when his book comes out later in the month, we'll have him on again about uh, the plot against the president and Kevin uh, and Devin Nunes. But you were, were talking about your piece on Ukraine, and I interrupted you just as you were getting to a no, highlight no, no. point. <laughs> right. No, it's okay. Um, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot to cover. I mean, w- one of the points that I want to try to drive home to people is that it's not really even about the Biden boast about getting the prosecutor fired. If we need to go back to 2014, when Joe Biden and the State Department are very active, both forcing out one Ukrainian president, this is during the uh, Euromaidan protest, they're forcing out Viktor Yanukovych, who happens to be the guy that Paul Manafort was working for. Now, one salient fact is you've heard over the last three years, Paul Manafort uh, adduced as evidence of the Trump team's Russia ties because the Ukrainian he worked for, Viktor Yanukovych, was pro-Putin. Well, that's, as it turns out, that's exactly the opposite of true. Wow. Manafort was trying to push, he was trying to push Yanukovych closer to the EU, right? So why all these lies? I mean, first of all, this continued lie is an absolute indictment of Washington's foreign policy class, right? That no one could have said that. Look at the different people we have working in this city on Russia and Ukraine. And not one of them was capable of standing up and saying, actually, the press campaign against Manafort and Trump, I, you know, I'm not going to take a, a, a position on that. But I got to tell you, what Manafort was doing was in parallel to the Obama administration. They were pushing the same thing for Yanukovych to get closer to Europe. So how does this happen? I thought that was evidence. That Manafort was a Russian stooge, like all of the Trump, uh, like all of the Trump team. So, but these things start to shake out in 2014. That's when Biden's son is appointed. And again, remember Yanukovych. I hate to throw all these, you know, all these different um, Sla- Slavic names out, Ukrainian and Russian names. It gets a little complicated. Um, yeah, remember Manafort was working at that period for Viktor Yanukovych. He's forced out of Ukraine, has to find sanctuary in Russia. Joe Biden comes in two months later in April. That's when his son, Hunter, is named to the board of this energy company, Burisma. The owner of Burisma, it's not some great reformer. It's an ally of Yanukovych, the guy who's just been run out of Ukraine. So for three years, we've heard Clinton operatives, we've heard Democratic Party operatives all say that Yanukovych, that the fact that Manafort was working with Yanukovych proves he's a dirtbag. Oh, but if Hunter Biden works with Yanukovych, there's nothing to even consider. Right. So this is what I mean. It has to go back even a little bit further. And I believe the more and more we dig, you know, John Solomon has been doing fantastic work on this. I believe the more and more that people dig into this and find out what went on there, we're going to find many of the roots and sources of what's come to become known as whether it's the, what do you want to call it, the Russiagate hoax, the, uh, the great Kremlin conspiracy, whatever people want to, whatever people, however people choose to describe it. But a lot of what happened in Ukraine and in Washington around 2014, That no doubt fed into the operation against first the Trump campaign, then the transition team, and then the presidency. We're still seeing it. Many people thought it ended when the Mueller report came up empty with no collusion. It was, however, rebooted 
three weeks ago now with this um, with this whistleblower's complaint. What we're seeing is it's a cyclical, like a classical story. It's a cyclical narrative that keeps rotating around the same themes, the same issues, with the same point, to push, to undo an election, and to push Trump from office. That's the purpose of it. That's right. That is. So what do you think will come out, if anything, with regard to Hunter Biden? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, again, I, I think that there's a larger there's a larger picture here where there's a lot of Obama officials, potentially, and some Clinton figures who may have been involved in strange stuff that's been going on in Ukraine since at least 2014. I believe that's quite likely. I think that people will continue to look into that and investigate it. I think the bigger picture right now, the, 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 the bigger picture in the near distance is what the Attorney General and uh, U.S. Attorney John Durham are looking at. I'm, I'm optimistic um, Dennis, I, I, I hope you are too, but I believe that, again, they're onto some very important and serious leads, and I think that they believe that what happened here, the way that this conspiracy theory has damaged our, not only our, our, has damaged our public sphere, I mean, it's done enormous damage to American institutions, the press, the intelligence community. I mean, every time I hear, you know, we saw reported over the weekend a, a second whistleblower's complaint. Like every additional time we get something like that, it's going to be it's it's going to take another decade for the American public to trust the intelligence community again. We all know they do that there are serious people who put their lives on the line across the world, including here in the United States. People who are who serve and protect their uh, their neighbors, their countrymen but the stuff that we're seeing is just astonishing. I mean, an active FBI officer, uh, or rather ac- active CIA officer, comes forward to participate in an operation against the sitting president? I mean, this is just incredible. Well, uh, it, th- it look, I, it's just part of my, my, I have my own larger theme. Everything the left touches, yeah. it ruins. So the, now, now it's the intelligence community. So that, that's exactly what what uh, has been yeah. described. Uh, I I want to ask you one more thing. So when we come back, you'll sure, answer. Yeah. How do you okay. think this will play out uh, politically? Uh, will uh, the Democrats benefit from it, et cetera, et cetera? Talking about Ukraine, if you have questions. One eight Prager seven seven six. Ukraine is the subject. Lee Smith is the author. His piece at uh, Real Clear Politics is up at DennisPrager.com. So just a couple of more questions. Uh, and the, the, I'll, I'll just repeat the one I said I would end with, but I still I want to go back to Hunter Biden for uh, afterwards. Do you think that as this plays out, I mean, the whole impeachment thing, yeah. Uh, do you think it will uh, it will benefit the Democrats? No, I think it's helping hard in a divide in this country. That's all I think it's doing. I mean, both sides seem to be heavily motivated. I mean, the left wing base is motivated by what they see as a uh, by what they see as an open field and uh, you know or an open shot. Why not go after Trump every chance they get? That's what they're doing. Um, and I think the right sees this and is frustrated and increasingly angry. I mean, look, again, the, the, what I think happened, what the president's main request of the Ukrainian president was, it's quite clear to anyone who reads the transcript, which Trump made available for people to read, his primary request is that the Ukrainians help out. He said something happened to our country. They, he, they did something to our country, right? Not the Ukrainians, the Americans. We Americans did it to ourselves. Trump wants to find out what happened in Ukraine, what role 
various Ukrainian figures may have played. But the basic fact is it's what Americans did to other Americans. We've been dealing with this now for nearly three years. I don't think at this point, even after the Mueller report, people, people on the left who wanted to believe in collusion haven't changed their mind. They either still believe that something really weird happened or they don't care. They believe it's a useful instrument to try to topple Trump, who was elected president. So I don't see it changing the basic equation. But again, I do believe that it's hardening a divide. That's a very good point. That's what it's doing. It's I incredibly agree. Incredibly dangerous. Yes. Very dangerous. That, that's correct. But they don't care. I mean, it's look. Apparently they don't. It's, no, they I, I don't. The left. Absolutely disastrous. Yes, no. it is. I'm totally yeah. on board with you. I'm sorry for going back to this, but I. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that is the the sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't even conceive of a legitimate reason, of an innocent right. reason, why right. Hunter Biden <laughs> is placed right. on a Ukrainian natural gas company right. board and given a salary, other right. than the fact that his father was vice president. The, the man knows I mean, nothing about right. natural gas. He he would right. if he were if he were parachuted into Ukraine, he wouldn't know where he was. So right. uh, so how did the, how is there a possible innocent explanation? Well, there can't be. And as different people have said, you know, the money is the money is the rather significant factor here. You can imagine one can we can imagine a scenario where they say, look, we have a lot of problems here in Ukraine with corruption. We'd love for you Americans to help out in any way possible. We know we've got a problem. We know that our you're going to condition our aid on cleaning up our act here, and we want to do it. And uh, Joe Biden comes up with a great idea and says, you know, my son Hunter's looking for a little work, and uh, this guy's on the up and up. He's going to come in and show you how to run some of your businesses with best possible practices. And, and you know what? Don't worry. You don't have to pay him. He's going to be drawing a salary from, uh, from some whoever, some U.S. government agency. He's going to be drawing a salary from USAID, and it's going to be a very modest salary because we know that most of your poor people there in Ukraine are at the tops. They're making about four hundred dollars a month, aside from the crooks who are making many thousands, who are making say fifty thousand dollars a month, right? So, but that didn't happen, did it? Hunter Biden went in there and got a salary of up to fifty thousand dollars a month. I think it would be very hard. I'm I'm open to all sorts of explanations. <laughs> and I think there's right. I I, I I I I you know I, I even imaginary ones, but I think it's implausible. I think if we look at the basic layout, and again, if we go back to before 2016, to 2014, and the different things that people are doing at that time from the United States government, different American figures, not just Paul Manafort. There are lots of people involved there, and I hope that that is one of the things that Attorney General Barr and U.S. Attorney uh, John Durham are looking at, that they're untangling some of these issues. For I don't think that Hunter Biden is at the center of it. I think he's an effect of bad things that were happening there. All I'm right. certainly not justifying whatever he did. Lately, do we, I think he's a, a do we have you? Do I have you more time, or you got to go? Well, sure. Let's let let. let okay. Let's... All right. Because we're going to take some calls too. Some people want to challenge you. I think it's very healthy, and uh, but I'm on board. Want to remind you about ADF Alliance Defending Freedom? That's exactly what they do. I raise money on this program for ADF, PragerU, and the Salvation Army. Gives you an idea of how highly I value. Indeed, venerate the ADF. They're the people who supply lawyers for free to the people fighting in the Supreme Court, like a case this week where a funeral home did not continue to hire one of its men who came in in a dress, didn't meet its dress code, can't have a dress code anymore at work. And the Americans watched their liberty chipped away, chipped away, always in the name of some great vaunted ideals. So please help ADF. There's a banner at my website or 800-469-9656, 800-469-9656. 
You are noted as the most generous audience in radio. I appreciate that immensely. Lee Smith is uh, an expert in these matters right now, Ukraine. Uh, can we go to calls? Is that okay with you, Lee? That'd be fun. Okay, sure. here we have a challenge have for a great you. audience. Thank you. Even if Jay. they want to argue. Yes, yeah. exactly. Jay, Arlington, uh, Texas. Hi. Hello, Dennis. Hi. Uh, Mr. Smith, with all due respect, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, I lived in okay. Ukraine for 12 years between 2003 and 2015 in Donetsk, where Yanukovych was from, and Paul Manafort had an office there. At no point in time was Manafort's job to move Yanukovych and the, and the party of regions towards the West. His job was to make them more presentable and more electable on behalf of the Kremlin and the pro-Kremlin-based oligarchs. Where you come up with your information is far beyond me, but I doubt you've ever lived there, nor do you speak the language. You have no idea All what right. you're saying. Well, let me just say yeah, this before... He's, before he's, we, he's but, quite right. He's quite right. I've not lived in Ukraine, and I do... Right, but well, let me just say, gentlemen, one second. Uh, I, I obviously, uh, Lee Smith will answer... Uh, the issue about Manafort, but uh, but Jay, if you have to live in the place in order to know what happened there, it's stupid for any of us to read history because none of us lived in the past. So I just need you to know that's irrelevant whether he speaks Ukrainian. So just so you'll know if you ever make this argument again, it's irrelevant. I don't speak Ukrainian, I speak Russian. So am I closer to the truth? Because Russian is related to Ukrainian. Okay, go ahead, Lee. Well, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't understand what it means to make it more presentable. I mean, if they wanted to sign the association agreement, they were never going to join the EU. Ukraine was never going to join the EU. We'll never join the EU. But if the idea was to somehow get closer to try to balance off, try to balance the Europeans off of the Russians, I don't understand what it means to make it look more presentable. I mean, it's just not clear to me why. So there was an elaborate hoax going on that under the cover of Europe, that Putin was actually going to submerge or he was actually going to undermine European interests more. I mean, Putin has his hand on the on, on the gas spigot. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, the way that I see it is the Europeans tried to balance that out by having some control over Ukrainians and Russian markets as well. I mean, it seems to me like perfectly reasonable statecraft, and you can disagree with both positions and who winds up in the middle of it. But somehow the idea that it was all some gigantic uh, fraud makes no sense to me. It's not what happened. Oh, all right. All right. I, I appreciate you calling, Jay. And uh, let's go to... Um uh, Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, and Greg. Hello, Greg. Dennis Prager and Lee Smith. Thank, thank you, Dennis. Uh, Lee, do you think a lot of this, 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 the corruption in the Ukraine, do you think it is a bigger picture with a lot more politicians involved and big figures in the United States? And is it possible that this all goes back to Obama? And because of that reason, nothing will probably ever come from these reports? Well, that's what I think. I think it's important to go back to at least 2014 and look at what's going on. And I'm, I, I actually don't think it's fair to just blame Obama um, and, and Obama-era officials in the same way that I think it was ridiculous to have left us all at the feet of Paul Manafort. I mean, it appears to me that Ukraine is a society with... Um, a society that is a problematic relationship with transparency. It seems to me that there are a lot of issues going on there, and I'm sure there are lots of Americans on both sides of the aisle who have gone in and out. That's why I think it's. I, that's why I think we have to be careful with different assessments regarding the probity and honesty of different prosecutors or different politicians. I think there's no analogy to be made with a. Uh, but, you know, with our society, with American politics, it just occur, it just, it just uh, it appears pretty clear that that's not what Ukrainian society is, is like, um, Ukrainian political society, that is. And again, I think we're going to have to pull this apart to see the different ways that Americans were involved in this 
and in the different ways Dennis asked before about Hunter Biden. It's certainly quite possible, and this is probably something that people are looking at, what were the things that Hunter Biden was doing? Was he breaking American laws? Was he breaking Ukrainian laws? Were there other Americans who were in violation that were in violation of American law or Ukrainian law at the time? How long was Hunter Biden on the board or whatever he was of this Ukrainian natural gas company? I believe it went up to 2019. I mean, so it started in 2014, and I believe until just recently he was on that board. So he continued to be on the board even after his father was no longer vice president. Right. So theoretically, right. that would that would argue uh, in his favor, just like the Bill Clinton speeches income dried up when his wife was no longer going to be president uh, or secretary of state. So just, uh, again, in the pursuit of truth, that's number one here. We continue. Lee Smith is my guest. The Dennis Prager Show. All right, everybody, Dennis Prager here. Lee Smith, I do want to thank you for uh, all the time you gave me, and uh, I look forward to your book coming out the end of this month, The Plot Against the President, which, by the way, I don't know why any honest even person on the left would not acknowledge there's a plot against the president. I mean, from the day he was elected to today, there is a plot to undo the election. Impeachment is, by definition, undoing an election. So I, people will will take umbrage at your title, but it's it's describing something true. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's it's an important thing. The true story of how Congressman Devin Nunes Nunes uncovered the biggest political scandal in U.S. history, and that is also true. It is the biggest mm-hmm. political scandal in U.S. history. As I keep telling my listeners, if it weren't for these constant hysterias, America would be at one of its most peaceful, happy times in history right now. That's the irony. There's no reason we should be going through a crisis. None. He's done nothing to to create it. The only thing he's done is is attack the left. But as as I said, again, went viral, apparently they're not used to it, let alone being investigated. Anyway, that's why uh, what you're doing is important. Lee Smith, speak to you later in the month. Thank you, Dennis. I look forward to it. Thanks again. Yes, sir. There's so much uh, to talk about. There's so much. You know, everything that I talk about, it all ties together. It all does. Otherwise, it... it see, I, I not otherwise. Otherwise. Forget my word otherwise and interrupt myself. I have been searching for a unified theory of life my whole life, just like they look for a unified theory in physics. I've looked for a unified theory in life, and I think I have found it. And that's why my happiness hour is as related to politics as any of my strictly political hours, like the, this one you just heard. When I say every week at the happiness hour, happy people make the world better. That's literally true. Think of how unhappy the left has made Americans in the last three years. Just think about it. <laughs> what is there to be unhappy about? We, we, we actually do have the best health care in the world. That's why people come to the United States. We eat well. We eat too much well. We have freedom. See you tomorrow. I'm excited to be here. This is my first time in Nashville. Howdy! <laughs> little mini pearl shout out for you there. I'll tell you, I'm surprised they don't enforce the same law for the campaign commercials that they do for the prescription medication commercials, where halfway through they have to include a disclaimer listing the side effects of all the crap that might go wrong if you vote for that candidate. Wouldn't that be so helpful? 
Instead of hearing, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I approve this message, no, I'd rather hear, if you vote for this candidate, you may experience bouts of upset stomach, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, rash, chills, fever, swelling of the tongue or throat, higher taxes, a deficit, depression, nightmares, thoughts of suicide, increased bowel movements, or need to have them and ill need to control them. If you have an election that lasts more than four hours, be sure to call your congressman immediately. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we can do it. And while we're at it, we should revamp the entire electoral process, because it already is an 18-month reality show. Why don't we shorten it to 13 weeks and put it on network TV for a couple hours a week? Wouldn't that make more sense? Call it, like, Presidential Idol or America's Got Candidates, something like that. <laughs> Primaries would be so simple. Candidates would come out, they get two minutes to give a speech, and when they're done, they'd have to get critiqued and voted on by the panel of celebrity judges. Wouldn't that be a fun show? Bernie Sanders comes out, you get Chris Wallace from Fox News moderating. Senator Sanders is a Jewish person running for office. If you're elected president, would you continue the tradition of the Easter egg hunt on the White House lawn? And then Bernie Sanders will come out and says, I, I, I am, of course, Jewish, Chris, but I'd have no religious objection to the Easter egg hunt on the White House lawn. I would, however, take objection that I'm 75 years old and I do not like it when kids play on my lawn. And as soon as he's finished, you'd have Simon Cowell sitting going, you know what I like about you, Bernie? You look like you belong in a nursing home talking to plants, but you're actually quite brilliant. It's a yes from me, you're off to Washington. Wouldn't that be a great show? And bring back all the different reality show judges each week. Bring back that guy I always liked from Project Runway, Tim Gunn. Be like, now let's make it work, people. Or bring back Howard Stern. He'd be funny. He was a judge on AGT. Oh, he'd be like, uh, let me tell you something, Bertie. You got like the hottest body. What are you, like a C cup? That would be. <laughs> I think we're outing a few Howard Stern fans. <laughs> but the best judge in the world and the only person in the world who qualifies as a TV reality show judge and as a candidate for office would be Donald Trump, which means technically he'd be allowed to judge himself. How fun would that be to watch? <laughs> right? <laughs> We are gonna make America so great again, folks. I promise you, I promise you. You're a loser, you're a disaster, you're a terrible person, nobody likes you. I can watch an hour of that a week and be thoroughly entertained. <laughs> but as I say, it's hard to be president because no matter what you do, 50% of the people are gonna find something wrong with it, right? And then you got comedians like me trying to find things funny. Like a couple weeks ago, uh, president was getting some heat from folks for saying things that could be perceived as culturally insensitive. But, funny thing I've noticed, most of the time, he says them as a compliment. Case in point, Chinese trade deal. The Chinese people laugh at us because we're making terrible deals, some of like the worst deals I've ever seen. And the Chinese people, and I love the Chinese people, by the way. They're wonderful people, the Chinese people. They do my shirts, the fantastic people. And they make those egg rolls. I love those egg rolls with that duck sauce. Now that's a great sauce. That really is a great sauce. And they're great little wall builders, those Chinamen. Did you know? They built some great, great walls there in China. But we're gonna build a greater one. We're gonna build the Great Wall of Trump. It's gonna have a casino, a golf course, two hotels. Mike Huckabee's gonna pay for it. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> But here's an example of some of the terrible deals. Every major city in our country is a Chinatown, right? Everywhere you go, we have a China. I went to five cities in China, they don't have one America town. You see what I mean, folks? <laughs> this is Obama's fault, people. But we're gonna fix it, I promise you we're gonna fix You know what else we're gonna fix in the trade deal now that our president? You know what we call our fancy dishes in this country? China, our fancy dishes are called China. Now that I'm president, I promise you, Chinese people will have to call their fancy dishes America. Let's make it great, or you're fired. Thank you, everybody. A pleasure. Oh, man. Okay, Stephen, I gave you a standing ovation, just oh, like Simon thank Cowell. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That was Double the funny. From you. Thank you. And I love it that you uh, 
you're an equal opportunity offender. I mean, you go after <laughs> Democrats, Republicans, and even the host of this show. Oh, it's, hardly, uh, hardly. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I subscribe to the Johnny Carson school of thought, which is what you can talk about politics as long as you don't take sides because ostensibly you alienate half your audience. Yeah. I don't want to alienate everybody. I want to make everybody laugh. So that's why I, I try and pick on the things. Like if I've done my job well, you should know if I'm a Republican, Democrat, or independent because it doesn't matter. What matters is making things funny that we see every day. I understand one of the things you've said is that you now get paid <laughs> for doing what got you in trouble when you were in school. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> for all those teachers who said to me, and I can amount to anything making those silly jokes, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, all my teachers. <laughs> uh, no, but I think that's got to be the coolest thing in it the is. world, to, to have been that kid that was a cut up in class yeah. and uh, probably constantly sitting up at the teacher's desk, which was the dumbest thing the teacher could do, <laughs> putting you up front where you could entertain the entire class. I always say I might have been the class clown if I actually went to class. <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand, though, uh, your dad was a... Uh, Sportscaster? Is a newscaster in New York. Still is. Still is. God bless him working hard. And uh, yeah, it's, it's people always ask me, what's it like having a newscaster as a dad? You know when it's bad? When you're a little kid and you get in trouble and you got to get yelled at or scolded by someone who has a newscaster voice? It puts the fear of God into you. Oh, yeah. Especially if my, I was so bad that my mom would have to call him up at work. And you'd be in that newscaster and be like, ah, your mother just told me what you did. Well, you're in a lot of trouble, mister, and you're going to get it when I get home tonight at 11. You know, it's like, <laughs> and now back to you, Joan. <laughs> Stephen, we love having having you here. A pleasure, Governor. Will you come back and I be with us again? I would be more than happy to. Absolutely. Well, we love you. This audience loves you. <laughs> Clearly, they are your fans. Thank you. For videos, tour dates, and a lot more from the amazing Stephen Scott, visit his website, stephenscott.tv. You can also follow him on Facebook at Stephen Scott Fan Page and Instagram and Twitter at Stephen Scott, L-O-L.